Mad World is an action game for the Wii that's uncharacteristically gruesome for the wholesome console. It's also the debut title of now famed developer Platinum Games, and what a hell of a debut it is. Farragon City is overrun by an organization that's forcing people to kill each other for sport, and players take the role of Jack, your friendly neighborhood badass, a bounty hunter with a mysterious purpose. Jack starts the competition in the hundreds, gradually ranking higher as players beat stages, ending with fun, albeit simplistic boss fights, which is a sufficient way to cap off the simplistic, albeit fun, slaughters. The story hardly evolves into anything but an explanation for bloody button mashing and Wiimote waggling, and falls into the already familiar Hunger Games plot, where a confined people kill for survival as audiences watch for money. Although it does try to be a good narrative, it thankfully doesn't take itself too seriously and is supported by outlandish characters and boss battles. Here comes Rin Rin, the fantastic Kung Fu Queen. Chris, didn't the two of you have a thing a while back? If by thing you mean a five minute fight that left me spitting teeth and pissing blood, yeah, then we had a thing. I'm going to enjoy every moment. Combat is executed with the A and B buttons, and movement is controlled with the nunchuck. The basic way to kill an enemy is to mash the A button enough to stun an enemy and to press either A or B for a finisher. Players can swipe the Wii mode for stronger knockbacks and enemies can be killed directly by swiping the Wii mode either vertically or horizontally while holding the B button though it should be noted that more points come from more punishment before a kill. Mad World nails the integration of motion controls to nail a baddie. I've forgotten how much better stabbing and slashing feels by swiping the Wii mode rather than simply pressing a button. Although stage weapons and the environment can soon get repetitive, swinging the kill switch like this, this, and this, never gets old. It's just so sweet to taste the rainbow. Bloodbath challenges in the middle of each level present an alternative way to rack up points before boss fights and have proven to be fun diversions. From swinging foes into a dartboard to sticking a ball in their heads to catapult them into giant models, there's no shortage of creativity here. Boss encounters happen after hitting a score quota and so invites more creative kills. Bosses themselves are a thrill if not only to see their unique design, but strong enough to lend excitement to see who you kill next in order to climb the ranks. Bosses are also easy to beat as they each have a pattern to avoid and to hack away with the chainsaw. The best bits are the action sequences which, when done successfully, lead away a good chunk of their life bar. As you can see, the whole game is drenched in black and white, splattered red, and painted by yellow sound effects drawing a comic book effect. The game's locales are quite creative, and it sets apart different sections of the city, from a subway to a Chinatown, to a futuristic robot facility. There is no shortage of street signs and rose bushes to maul baddies into a bloody carcass. The game's soundtrack can at times support the hype of the bloody sport, but can also be forgettable otherwise. The game's voice acting, however, is consistently stellar. The back and forth between the two announcers particularly spice up the kills and are delivered well enough to enjoy despite repetition. And look who's rolling in, that ironclad asshole who thinks he's the fifth beating. I hope Jack kicks his fat armored ass. Uh, let the good times roll. You make me feel pukey! The story mode can be finished in an accumulated 3-4 to four hours and invites replayability by unlocking the katana and the double chainsaw. Though the game does have competitive local two-player, this review focuses mainly on the single-player mode. Enemies at first are total pushovers, although they do step up in latter levels. They never get to the point of being difficult, which, in the end, works in the game's favor because it's just plain fun to slash up baddies and see the many ways they can be tortured in the environment. The camera can be an issue as it doesn't always adjust itself to show where you're going. Thankfully, the lock-on mechanic suffices the need to rotate around one target, but might not be a complete solution when facing multiple foes. It's possible to punch and slash without making contact despite close proximity. Particularly an issue in boss battles, the lock-on disappears after every sequence leaving a brief moment of vulnerability from having to reorient according to the target. There have been some bosses who have gone cheap shots this way. Additionally, the frame rate dropped a couple of times but only happened for a second and hardly marred the experience. Mad World bleeds a surprising amount of creativity and polish to be an outstandingly gruesome gem for the Wii. Although the single player experience is quite brief, it's now possible to get the game for $5 Australian or less for a unique experience that lets players swing their arms in decimation, letting them feel like a total badass. Let the games begin.